Welcome to Die Kaiju Network Podcast, where we have a very healthy obsession with kaiju. I am your co-host, Kent, and with me is your other co-host. Jason, how's it going, everyone? So we are continuing our Jurassic Park slash world, uh, I guess, uh, you know, retrospective here. So what we're doing today is we're doing uh, an audio commentary on 1997's The Lost World Jurassic Park, directed by Steven Spielberg, his final Jurassic Park movie that he's going to direct. And um, yeah, uh, before we kind of get into anything, um, Jason, is there any uh, – housekeeping that needs to be done yeah, I just here. I want to make sure that if you see a, a red subscribe button down below, if you're watching us on YouTube, just make sure to hit that subscribe be- uh, button as well as hit that, uh, or you can smash that like button and hit the notification bell icon so you wouldn't uh, miss any notifications on our videos. And as well, we're uh, uh, streaming on Twitch as well. We use uh, stream on a few other ones, but uh, we're, we decided to exclusively stream on both YouTube and Twitch. And uh, we also have uh, the audio versions of our podcasts that you can find us over at uh, Apple uh, Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, as well as TuneIn. And uh, you can also find both uh, video and audio versions on our own website. You can also stream us there whenever we're live over at uh, daikaijunetwork.com. All right, and so uh, similar to what we did here a couple weeks ago when we did Jurassic Park, we're going to watch The Lost World via HBO Max because Jason, once again, uh, doesn't have any sort of home video set up where he's currently podcasting. Well, so. <laughs> I sort of have a, uh, a home video thing, but it's just through my laptop. You might as well just say the dog ate your homework. I mean, that's that's about as lame as what we got here. I don't have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you might as well just say it, which makes it even more lame. <laughs> but yeah, so <clears throat> because we're doing it via HBO Max, things are going to be different if you're watching it, you know, Blu-ray, DVD, etc. So where we're at on the HBO Max part is uh, we're right at the point where the Universal logo is just getting ready uh, to start up. That's where we have it paused right now. Um, so anybody who is wanting to watch a via HBO Max or you're doing it through whatever means – uh, kind of get your setup kind of right to that point as the Universal logo is getting ready to pop up here. So um, I just want to say um, for myself, this movie, uh, I find it to be very interesting in that I frequent uh, some Jurassic Park groups via Facebook. And it seems like over the last five or so years, this movie in, in the eyes of quite a few Jurassic Park fans is starting to be viewed more as like maybe one, if not the worst in the Jurassic Park series, because for so many years, everybody was saying Jurassic Park 3, Jurassic Park 3. Well, similarly, like with Godzilla, you know how for so many years, people were always going back and forth, whether it was Godzilla's Revenge or Megalon. And now, then all of a sudden, people were like, no, Godzilla's Revenge is, you know, an artistic beast. While I'm like, eh. look, look, it's it's not garbage, but it's, let's I not think, get I think that far ahead of ourselves. <laughs> maybe about a couple of years, because I remember, I think it was the last time when we attended uh, G Fest before the whole pandemic thing happened. I think that was when, right around the time that whole. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, look, I defended Godzilla's Revenge for many years, but I never once said that was a work of art. I'm like, no, it's it's a little bit better than than what you think it is. But yeah, it is made more for a younger audience, so it's, it's not your sensibilities. Sort of but then everybody's like, no, it's the best. Thing. It's like <laughs> it's like they started to come on your side, but I think they went a little too overboard or a little too far. <laughs> It's like you're limited to one drink, and instead they took a whole 12-pack with that is what they did. But um, I find it interesting because then there's been this debate going on within the Jurassic Park fandom as far as like where this sits and everything. And um, um, I, I, I still think the Lost World Jurassic Park, yeah, it doesn't necessarily have the substance of like Jurassic Park. But at the same time, I think there is an awful lot to like about this one. I, I think – is it your run-of-the-mill dinosaur on the loose type of movie? By and large, yeah. I mean there's not much of a story other than uh, they were studying the dinosaurs and then they're trying to prevent uh, Hammond's nephew from 
trying to uh, bring some of those dinosaurs back to San Diego where they're hoping to build an inland Jurassic Park there. And, you know, that's really about it. There's there's not much to the story. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I have defended movies that are just nothing more than pure popcorn fun. And um, I think this one is pretty darn good. I, In fact, look, I like Jurassic Park 3. I will defend that movie. Is it great? No. But I think this one uh, in many ways is a better made film and slightly more entertaining than that one. Uh, when we get to Jurassic Park 3, I will uh, explain why I think that one fell just a little bit short uh, in, in certain respects. But um, I think this one is fun. I remember watching it in theaters back in 1997. It was like the event movie that summer. And um, yeah, I, I loved it back then. Uh, I, I, I will admit I don't watch it as much now as I used to, but I still think uh, it's a pretty fun movie by and large. Yeah, it's it's one of those uh, films I haven't seen a whole lot or a long time, but um, I do remember that I did see uh, some of it uh, most recently. I think uh, several months ago, I only just saw a little bit of it was when um, I'm not sure which uh, TV channel uh, had it on, so but I did watch a little bit of it, uh, but that was the first time uh, in a long time since I've seen anything related to this uh, movie specifically. But yeah, I can still uh, remember both you and I seeing it in the theaters. I'm, I think... Our sister sure, took us. Yeah, I think it was either our sister or dad that took us to see that. Uh, we recently moved to uh, the Des Moines area right around that uh, time of the year um, and the like. But, uh, yeah, I can still finally remember. And I think that was the same year when we went to see the the Mortal Kombat sequel and then uh, Batman and Robin. Volcano. I think, <laughs> I think all of those came out that year. <laughs> yeah. Stuff. But, uh, yeah, the, the 97, it was a pretty interesting uh, year. It's a fun year. The 90s, I tell you. Like, there are a lot of fun films. You could tell it was an excess decade because, yeah, you had, like, just a bunch of mediocre films that are fun. So <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, all, I'm all right with that. <laughs> but I think I remember when we went to see uh, Batman and Robin that year. I think it, uh, I do remember – Maybe one or two guys that just walked out the theater and never saw them again. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't bad. remember that part. I, I do. I do remember at least one of them walking out from from seeing that movie. But, I liked uh, it. Look, I will defend that movie, and, and I'm not joking when I say I lost a friend because I told him I liked that movie. That's how shallow <laughs> that so-called friend was. And but yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, not. Nonetheless, uh, uh, Lost World Jurassic Park. I think it's it's a decent movie. I, um, when it comes to as far as the whole saga, including the the three new ones, with the new one coming up here next month, um, I probably would at least say, out of all this, um, five of them right now, this one probably sort of in the lower tier. Oh really? Hmm. Interesting. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, there's there's a lot of them there, and it's just for me, it's just sort of hard to kind of choose which one is going to be on top. And right. Yeah. Below, so it's it's kind of like me with the Rocky franchise, where it's like I love all of them, and to do some sort of a ranking, I always have to preface it by saying, "Look, I love them all. To me, they're all five star movies. So just because one movie's at the bottom doesn't mean that I think it's bad." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. For me, um, I still uh, – Jurassic World, uh, the first Jurassic World, I, I still – is my personal favorite. Do I think it's the best? No. Um, then after that, boy, it, it's hard to pick. Um, I probably would actually put Fallen Kingdom next because I think Fallen Kingdom is a very misunderstood good movie. And then after that, I probably would put – I probably would put this one, then I'd put Jurassic 
Park and then Jurassic Park 3. Uh, That would probably be my order. (laughs) Mine, I'd say, is almost the same, except I would flip uh, Jurassic Park and then Lost World. Yeah, I think Jurassic Park, as we talked about a couple weeks ago, I, I think the movie in terms of its substance is pretty good. But I think uh, in some areas, unfortunately, it was showing its age, you know, 30 years later. Yeah, because um, like uh, a couple weeks ago when we uh, commentated on the film and then discussed it a little bit. In, and I remember sort of saying that uh, I don't really remember – it being like this after many years of not watching it. The th- yeah, to me, even as a kid, and look, uh, this is back in 97, I loved this one a hell of a lot more than I liked Jurassic Park. That's not to say I didn't like Jurassic Park when it was in theaters when I was younger. I did, but I was disappointed because I was a younger kid. I didn't quite understand you know, some of the philosophy and messaging behind that first movie. I wanted to see the cool-ass dinosaurs, and... I I remember I was like, I like it, but I'm disappointed that there isn't more dino action. And this one provided that. And for a number of years up until they did Jurassic World, like this was my favorite out of the whole trilogy because I'm like, there's just dinosaurs. Just give me the dinosaurs. Um, And being older, uh, you know, I appreciate the Jurassic Park messaging and, and, and philosophy behind that. But at the same time, in terms of just I, – I still think it could have improved the dino action by at least providing a little bit more of that in that film. I think they could have done that and you know shortened a few parts and stuff and all that. But um, th- there's just something about that to where sadly uh, it, it kind of just shows it. It's just hard for me to explain, but – it's still a good movie. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I still like it. I still think it's one of those, um, you know, handfuls of movies that you see over the course of your lifetime that kind of shapes movie making uh, and all that. And I still do think it's one of Spielberg's better films. I, I'm I'm still not quite sure if I think uh, personally if it's his best, but I, it's definitely, in my opinion, up there. Um, but yeah, I just I, I don't know, like. I think the the movie occasionally gets a bit too preachy, um, but yeah, it could use more dino action. So Spielberg's like, "You want a dino action? Guess what? I'm coming back for a sequel." <laughs> so here we are. Uh, if you haven't uh, joined us before on a commentary, what we do is we count down from three. I go three, two, one, go. When I say go, that's when we hit the OK or play button on your device, and that's when we get started. So you ready, Jason? Yep, I am ready. All right, so here we go. Three, two, one, go. So what's very interesting – oh, what? I was saying I'm going to get the commentary cam on so you won't have to see our ugly faces. (laughs) So one of the interesting – things about this particular movie is if anyone who has read the Michael Crichton Jurassic Park novelization uh, by the way I'm going to spoil the ending of that to you um, the ending of the Jurassic Park novel uh, ends with the island by and large getting blown up in an atomic blast if I remember correctly regardless it gets blown up Um, so um you know, Crichton had had no intentions on writing a sequel or anything like that. And then uh, when Jurassic Park, the movie, was received phenomenally, not just by critics, but by audiences, made a gazillion dollars, uh, you know, it, obviously a sequel was going to be in the works. So when Spielberg decided to come back and do this movie, uh, he asked Crichton – to write a sequel and Crichton was kind of I don't know I mean I you know, I blew the damn island up in my book like what do, what do we and s- some of the characters like Hammond were killed in that book uh, and what have you <coughs> excuse me and then uh, eventually um, you know Spielberg convinced um, I'm having issues with the streaming on my end for whatever reason um Spielberg was able to convince Crichton to write the the Lost World novel, and of course, like his Jurassic Park novel, the Jura- the Lost World novel is. 
pretty darn different from what we see here in the movie. Uh, and of course, certain things are retconned and redone, um, you know, because obviously the, the, how the first book was so different. And so, yeah, there's some whoopsie daisies and all that, but that had to be done intentionally in order to tell the story. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a whoopsie do, <laughs> but what can kinda, you do? I kind of like how in this uh, first sequence of the movie where you have these uh, rich people. I'm not sure where specifically they're from. I'm assuming France. And I'm thinking Britain because of their accents. Oh, it's been a long time for me, so I'm probably assuming so. And I've got my volume down a bit low, so uh, for reasons. Um, but yeah, you would think that this island that they're on, of course, Isla. Um, that you would think that uh, uh, it would have been known in international news and all that that these islands consisted of genetically modified dinosaurs and all that, <laughs> and you would want to avoid, you know, having picnics or something as like an elite on these sort of islands. Well, I, uh, uh, Hammond said he owned Nublar. I'm wondering if he owned Sorna because, uh, as we find out later, Sorna was used to uh, hatch and, and, and produce the dinosaurs up to a point, and then they would be shipped over to Nublar for the park. Mm-hmm. But... I, I have to admit that uh, as I've gotten older, there's a part of me because these people are rich that there's a small part of me that takes the glee that their that their child, you know, gets beat up a little bit here by uh, by compies. <laughs> you rich snobs! That'll teach you to be rich. <laughs> I remember this sequence in the theater uh, coming up here in just like two seconds. Yeah, <laughs> people were laughing at that. It's, I remember in the theaters, I'm like, "Wait a minute, where did Malcolm come from?" And they're screaming about Malcolm. <laughs> that was actually that's one of the best transitions I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah, and then there's Malcolm yawning. <laughs> He's like, "What? What are you screaming at me for?" I'm sure the the subway system is not quite as clean as what has been seen here, but <laughs> it sort of reminds me uh, the subway over at uh, DC because it kind of has that uh, oh uh, kind of the hexagonal looking shape in the interior. I think it looked like this about five years ago when I was in DC. I'm trying to think like where is this supposed to be is it like New York like I'm assuming so maybe according to that map behind that one dude there and even in the background there the subway kind of looks like uh, New York yeah that's what I'm wondering I've seen this guy in like I can't think of any of the movies off the top of my head but he always plays a real minor role usually like these butler types yeah, yeah, I, was, I was thinking the same thing as that I could have sworn I had seen him somewhere before and no, I'm not going to look his name up. So anyone who's uh, really curious about this dude's career, you can do that on your own time. <laughs> make, I sure is. Just make, an entire, not. just make an entire YouTube video just ded- dedicating to this. Uh, <laughs> no, I, we're not. No, we're not doing YouTube. We're doing a whole podcast, like centered around this guy. <laughs> it's crazy how like in movies over a three year period, like how child actors grow so quickly well, but like in real life like <laughs> mainly the boy himself because the gal she didn't, didn't change quite as much I would say maybe she's gotten a little bit taller <laughs> 
this guy always reminded me of the German from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. He gets his <laughs> you know, face I melted. Just, I was just thinking the same thing, too, until you brought that up. It's like, <laughs> wink a dink. You wonder, did Spielberg do that intentionally? <laughs> I need a villain. What should he look like? Well, let me look at my previous movies. And he goes back right there. <laughs> the guy who gets his face melted. <laughs> Let's just sort of reincarnate him. <clears throat> and then, spoiler alert, get eaten by dinosaurs. <laughs> That's too bad we don't get to see the gory details, but... That'd be funny, like he was eating alive, like the little babies, like eating out of his gut, and he's like, ah! <laughs> Then you would have gotten an R rating. <laughs> oh, I know, just for that, like, five-second shot. <laughs> <clears throat> and no one Spiel Spielberg is like, I don't want to go with that. Spielberg, yeah, is not going to do that. Not in a movie with dinosaurs where you want to have only, a wider audience. The only closest gory thing that he's ever done is anything with the Jaws movies. No, I would argue Saving Private Ryan, like the opening, oh, was it like yeah, Normandy yeah, or whatever that is? Yeah. Yeah, now I forget. Jaws today would have been a PG-13. <laughs> but wasn't it like during those days, that's a PG rating or something. Well, yeah, because PG-13 didn't come into play. I can't remember. It either Was started it in 84. Yeah. It either started in 84 or the MPA approved of it, but then didn't put it into play until 85. Like, it's some. It's one of those two things. Let me let me see here. It, 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 it's either 84 or 85. was like its first year. Let's see. I gotta turn off my fan here. I'm having a hard time hearing these guys. Film classification system here. Boy, there's quite a few variations. It's like Thailand uses it as a TV classification system. <laughs> Let's see here. Boy, this is more complicated than I thought. It shouldn't be. Oh, there's just a lot. Here, let me let me try to get to the heart of the matter here. When? Here, here, whoa. here. All right, I've got it. Um. Yeah, uh, in the 1980s, complaints about violence and gore in films such as Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom and Gremlins. Both of which received PG ratings. Refocus attention on films seen by small children and preteens. Really, the Gremlins movie was one of those movies that pissed people off. Okay, so it was introduced on July first, nineteen first, nineteen eighty four. Yep. I was. See, I just did. What year did PG thirteen start? And immediately, right here on July first, nineteen eighty four. Yeah, and the first <laughs> film to be released with this rating was. Uh, John Milius's war film Red Dawn. Hmm, interesting. It's interesting because you have Isa Sorna here, and obviously Sorna comes into play for part three, and you have the Spino. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's movies. You, you just got to play along with it. Yeah. They didn't know there would be a part three. You know, this one came, what, uh, no, it was four years. Okay, yeah, okay, I thought it was three years, but it's four years. Mm -hmm. Never mind, I was going to make a point, but the point wouldn't be anything because it would have been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, apparently there's several different versions. I'm still kind of going about this whole race <laughs> that... Uh, there's different kinds of uh, band, uh, B A and D uh, trailers. You know, like the the general green band, and then the red band for uh, R-rated uh, films and stuff for trailers. Apparently, there's a yellow band version. I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, 
Well, um, I'll kind of let me. Uh, uh, let me get the link here for you. By the way, not to forget about the Lost World. Uh, basically, you know, Hammond has a new island. Malcolm's just learned about this. Hammond's saying, I need a photo record. Oh, by the way, your girlfriend's on the island just to get you there. You son of a bitch. You old <laughs> fart. I should suffocate you, which, by the way, will end up happening to Hammond's brother uh, in uh, Fallen Kingdom. No, not brother. Uh, his associate. It's those kinds of things if you... I wondered if that's what you were talking about, but you know what? I I don't even – like once in a great while I'll see red. Once – I think I've – I don't think I've ever seen yellow. Yeah, I've never seen a yellow one, but apparently it was, uh, first appeared it for the uh, the 2009 film The Unborn. I, I, yeah, I'm, I mean I've seen the red one like maybe three or four times max, but otherwise I'm always seeing the green, even for PG-13 and R films. I yeah. thought that's maybe what you were talking about, but I'm like, no, that can't be it because like I just said, I don't <laughs> – As far as the red band, that usually sh- – like for those trailers, I'll show some of the gore. Oh, may, okay. So, okay. It's like a, the color is nothing more than a warning of you're going to see like maybe something that could disturb you. Yeah. Wouldn't you hate to be colorblind? And then like you're you're watching like a PG-13 movie, they have an R trailer, and then like maybe you're like you have a weak disposition towards gore. And you're like, oh, an R-rated movie. Oh! <laughs> But anyways, <laughs> back on topic. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that given how this movie ends uh, ends up concluding, I think it's a nice way for the Hammond character to kind of exit the series. But at the same time... Heyman's kind of an ass when you really watch these movies and pay close attention because like what he just did here like even though Sarah ended up wanting to go on her own will you know the the fact that Malcolm wasn't even aware of it and, and he's intentionally once again putting people in harm's way uh there's a small part of me that's like, eh, maybe Hammond should have gotten what was coming to him at some point in this series. Because <laughs> what year did Richard Attenborough – was he – was it 2010, 11? I want to say it was somewhere in there he died. And no clue. Let me do a quick – my turn to do research. Um, <laughs> Richard Attenborough. Oh, 2014, August 24, 2014. Yeah, I always keep forgetting that Vince Vaughn is in this. Yeah. <laughs> He's still playing Vince Vaughn, but not like funny Vince Vaughn. I mean, well, he th- there are some quirky moments, but he's not like funny Vince Vaughn, like wedding crashes, you know? Yeah. And then Richard Skiff there, who's playing Eddie, very thin. I'm used to seeing him in the TV show West Wing, where he kind of plays this hard-headed bastard. And here, you know, he's kind of the lovable tech dude. Sega does what Nintendo don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was their tagline. I'm not joking. Yeah, Sega does what Nintendo don't. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. <laughs> Gotta go fast. Their processor indeed was better than Super Nintendo's, but Super Nintendo, in a general sense, had the better library. <laughs> yeah, speaking speaking about Sega, it's kind of a sad story recently. You know. Um, for those of you that are 
you know familiar with Japan and all that, that they uh, Sega had some of those arcade uh, type of places like in Akihabara and some of those other places like the classic arcade places where you can play games and some of those uh, UFO catchers and all that. Well, apparently, they just renamed them to uh, Gigo, so they're no longer mm. Sega. Well, I know, um, did Nintendo buy out Sega here like a decade ago or whenever it was? Because they have Sonic now as part of their library. Well, let's do some research. Again. <laughs> Welcome to Daikaiju Network, where you're not only going to be listening about monster movies, we're also going to do some random research shit. <laughs> <laughs> So you learned about the MPAA. We learned what uh, year Richard Attenborough died. Now we're going to learn more about uh, Sega. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seems like that they still have their main headquarters stationed in uh, Shinagawa, Tokyo. Maybe they're a subsidiary of Nintendo. Parent, parent still Sega Group Corp. Huh. Would have said Nintendo. Nintendo's involved somehow because Sonic is a part of their library now. But they do they do have quite a bit of uh, subsidiaries like Amplitude, Atlas, Creative Assembly, Hardlight, and a few others. Even TMS Entertainment. Oh yeah, that's the uh, uh, anime uh, company that I know of, and that they're I know. Quite a few of the uh, animes that I usually watch that are from that uh, company. I'm gonna still do a little bit of research here. 2015 to present restructuring. Shows here. Uh, that Sega sold one of their companies to a co founder. Let's see, during latter half 2020, how much financial gains Sega made early part of the year were wiped out to, due to impact of the coof um Sega Sammy sold 85.1% of his shares in the division to Genda Inc though the Sega branded and coin operated machines produced by the company continued to be found in the arcades by January okay, 2022, so. Sega sold the remaining portion of its division to Genda, which I'm assuming that's where they got the renaming of Gingo for those places over in Japan. Okay, so I have like a three or four sentence thing here um, that says, although Sega is not owned by Nintendo, they do have the rights to many of the Sega games. This is why there are some Sega games on the Switch as well as other devices. Sega and Nintendo have a great relationship, but Nintendo does not own Sega. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm not seeing, because I haven't really been seeing anything. I only just see mentions of Nintendo. It's so funny that they were at odds like throughout most of the 90s and now they're like Apollo Creed and Rocky Balboa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the five deaths. Did you guys see the first movie at all? <laughs> it only made like a bajillion dollars. I still remember 97 Mercedes, like, you know, was tying in their, their car products with this movie. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I'm not... 
th- I, pro- I know for sure that I missed some of the portions. I'm not sure the reason why they're there. Probably just to uh, rescue uh, those people or something like that. <laughs> No, um, because Hammond's nephew is going to go in there and interfere and try to capture some of the dinosaurs and and what have you. Um, Hammond more or less had kind of the the control of Engine taken away from him by his nephew. So he sends in this team to take a photo record of the animals that are on Sorna. And he told, he kind of in a roundabout way tells Malcolm that his girlfriend's there. And of course, Malcolm's pissed. And now Malcolm is coming here to take his girlfriend back while, you know, Vince Vaughn, Eddie and uh, Sarah are here to do more of the work that Hammond wanted. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, even even for here in '97 standards, the visual effects are still pretty good. Yeah. Sadly, I, I must admit they're maybe half to no more than one step below from what we thought back then. But you know, like you said, still it's still good. I'm not, you know, I'm not dissing it. Just calm down, everybody. Calm down. I'm not. Di- I'm just saying, you know, it, this is a movie that will be 30 years old here in like five years. So. Man, hard to believe. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're like two or three seconds ahead of me because I heard it from your end before I heard it from mine. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Um, uh, um, this act, is it, Julian Moore? Yeah, Julian Moore. <laughs> And uh, Vince Vaughn would end up, you know, kind of being pretty big, respective actors in their own right. This is where I I was introduced to him. Yeah, Julianne Moore, like she was pretty hot. (laughs) I would argue as she's gotten older. Yeah. She was in Assassins. I remember that. That was, I think, the the same year, or was Assassins in '95? More research. <laughs> I think it's '97. Assassins. Oops, not Assassos. '95. <laughs> oh, so she was actually in. But I saw this movie before I saw Assassins. What is in the world? Like, that's the third, fourth. I'm having issues with the streaming on my end. Like, it will freeze for a moment. That's probably why I'm, like, a couple seconds behind you. Because it happened, like, when the movie started. Probably your internet connection. Well, it's not internet. It's through our cable. No. No. I was wondering maybe this cable box just needs to be unhooked for like a moment and then plugged back in. Yeah, and the one thing you don't get anymore is it's like they're trying to like they've really reduced the amount of practical effects. They tried a small bit of it in Jurassic World with the dead brontosaurs. Yeah. But it seems Nowadays, they've been really reducing a lot of the practical effects uh, stuff. But I know, like, uh, there are some directors out there that still use quite a bit of practical effects. I would say, namely, Guillermo del Toro and uh, J.J. Abrams. The new Dominion's going to have some practicals, like the Giganotosaurus. That's going to be a big one. I think the Pyroraptor is another one. And I think the other one is the the, uh, uh, Atricinoraptor. It's got an interesting name to it. It's the albino-looking raptor. Hmm. 
I'm going to see if I can fast forward for like just a moment to see if I can catch up more to where you're at. Okay, whoops. I'm right around the 2737. Okay, see, mine doesn't show that. It shows how much is left of the movie. Oh. My, uh, it's, uh, what's left is one four, one forty, one one hour forty minutes thirty five, thirty four, thirty three. I just got done with Vince Vaughn saying, "Give me the Pulitzer right now," so that's kind of where I'm at. Now she's chewing him out for getting ready to light up a cigarette. This is was in California. Uh, my wife and I went Red through Woods. the Redwood. Yeah, the Redwoods. I've totally forgot about that. I had partially watched this movie um, a year ago when I was in a drunken stupor. And I remember even in my <laughs> drunken stupor, uh, I saw this part and I'm like, I've been through there. I forgot that this was in the movie. Well, and then when we were visiting San Francisco, we were there for a week, and like after four or five days, I realized, hey, wait a minute, the 2014 Godzilla movie was like... You know, it's kind of the same thing with me being in Vegas because there's a lot of those movies based in Vegas. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, DC with both movie and TVs, you know, ID4. And <laughs> 2019 Godzilla. Yeah. Although 2019 Godzilla didn't happen at the uh, the last time I was in DC. Yeah. Uh, when I went in August of 19, it had been out for about two months at that point. Yeah, I was there two years before <laughs> that came out. No, I was no, I wasn't. Yeah, no, I I take that back. I was there in 18. I, I was in San Francisco in 19. I yeah, so yeah, it hadn't happened. But yeah, I was there in 18, August 18. God, it's hard to believe that's almost four years ago now. Yeah, for me, for Vegas, five and six years. You know what movie would come to mind for me if I was in Vegas? What? Vegas Vacation. (laughs) Well, and I kid you not, and I think I told you this, but I'm not sure if you still remember. Side note, that uh, (laughs) I drove, it's like I rented a, 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 a Ford Mustang for the entire day, and I drove over to the Hoover Dam. Uh, and did the tour thing before the tour, like the guide. It's like, I kid you not, like it came, like, see, I think he probably knew the movie and stuff. And he's, he said, do you, do you guys have any damn questions? <laughs> you can take all the damn pictures you want. <laughs> yeah. You should have been like, where can I find some damn bait? <laughs> well, and the guide himself, and I think I was uh, uh, wearing... Or you, uh, I don't think I was wearing a Michigan State shirt then, but he, uh, I was talking with him. He mentioned that he was, uh, went to school at uh, Michigan State, and I oh. told him that, uh, uh, Michelle, I, I just said my brother's wife, that she works over at uh, the university there. Yeah. Tall talk. I don't think I've ever heard an adult say that. I've heard like big people or adult talk, but I have never heard tall talk. (laughs) Cue the young and the restless theme here. By the way, another side note. I was... um, watching some of the classic lost in space tv here about two weeks ago and so the disc you know i got done watching the disc and so i took out the disc turned off the 
Blu-ray and, you know, my new TV will automatically go to live TV. And it just so happened it was on like ABC or something like that. And one of the soaps was playing. And this one dude had another dude locked up in some sort of dudgeon with some chains. (laughs) And I'm not joking. And the set for like even the chains and what this guy was chained to looked far worse than what you would see in a middle school prop play. And I just like some kind of uh, whole movie or like one of those uh, uh, really bad movies from MST3K. It This looked so ridiculously fake. I'm like, look, I understand these soaps are kind of pathetic, and I think most of these people know that, but that shit looked bad. <laughs> like, it was awful. And it's in a dungeon. I'm like, wow. Like, <laughs> Well, and I know our mother, she, she watches – those uh so she used to i think she quit watching i don't know i think she still watches them um she used to watch him and the restless uh many years if i remember if she still does or not because i asked her at one point a number of years ago and i thought she said she didn't really watch him anymore because i think she was saying a lot of the older cast left and (sighs) but yeah i can still remember all of those will uh, come on soon after uh, Price is Right <clears throat> was over. Yeah. Oh, the old days. So he's married. We hear nothing about a wife. So, you know, I wonder what the news would have been like after she found out that he gets killed later. Oh, goody, I get the purse strings. <laughs> get your typical Aussie type of dude kind of going out uh, hunting exotic species. Well, he's I've seen him in a number of supporting roles too over the years. He's always playing a tough guy. Okay. So he's British, he's Aussie, and I have uh, every reason to believe that the Aussie dude is right to be pissed because, well, the British used to drop off their prisoners at Australia. So oh, that, probably yeah, that, that's what Australia was originally. It was supposed. To be that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what island. I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he has every right to be bitter. <laughs> What? His description of the dinosaurs. He was trying to go through that whole she of of the specific dinosaurs that they're trying to capture, and just the sh- really sheer shaking of the truck. He just couldn't get all stabilized and just describes them very very weirdly. Oh, dude, you must be farther ahead than I am now. Did you already see the one where the one paleontologist, like they're they're trying to round up the pachycephalosaur? The one the cowboy hat, yeah, I just saw him. Because I'm at 36.24. Uh, I think you're quite a bit further ahead of me now because of the... Let me, just, let me wait a few more moments here just in case. And you have a dinosaur just ramming a guy through a jeep there. Yeah, that didn't happen on my end yet. Crap. Like, I think what got me was like the loading earlier. Oh gosh, yeah, I think... Did you just see them bring down the Parasaurolophus? Uh, just shooting him right now at the tranquilizers. Okay, let me know when you have 
our heroes like staring down at them. Okay, got Ben's phone there. Setting up a little satellite there. What the hell? Are we off? Have you seen the guy checking out T-Rex tracks? This is where I'm at. Oh, gosh, I'm way ahead. Maybe I was closer to you than I thought. Okay, I'll... Okay, I'll hold off here. I'm at the point where they're looking at T-Rex tracks now. Okay. Why don't you just keep holding that up for a moment? That's I must have missed that or something. Like I thought you were quite a ways ahead of me. Here, I'm going to rewind just a bit here. And then So yeah, we were actually like closer together. Okay, come on, load. Come on here. Okay. Okay, that's... Okay, there we go. I'm like maybe a second, second and a half ahead of you. Okay. I don't know how in the world I missed that. Because like I, I've been having like a few issues with this thing freezing like once in a great while. So I thought maybe like it pushed me back a ways. Technology on Daikaiju Network. Hmm. This scientist here is based off of the uh, paleontologist Robert Bacher, yeah, who's my yeah. favorite paleontologist. Yeah, I, I remember that from that uh, whole PBS special from ages ago. The dinosaurs. You can actually find that on YouTube. Well, no, I think that uh, HBO Max has it. They do? If I remember, yeah. Um, I let me I do some digging here. Seeing, uh, walking with dinosaurs here. Yeah, that's different than the the dinosaurs PBS. Yeah, I know, but I think I did see it along with it. Uh, hey, it's here. formidable. <laughs> <laughs> Not abominable. It's abomination. Abomination. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. That it's doesn't sound right. <laughs> The abominable abomination. <laughs> oh, shoot. I forgot. This is a new computer. It doesn't have all my information saved because I don't remember my password for Xfinity. Shoot. Well, I'll have to check out later. How oh, the joy is when you have to set up old stuff on a com new computer. I didn't finish their dinner there. Still a perfectly good Parasaurolophus carcass. What a waste. Kim, why don't you go there and finish it up? On my way. It's interesting that it's only one baby. Boy, look at all those mosquitoes. Those are flies because of the meat. This always gets me now. I'm like, you bastards. <laughs> like, I still wish this Indiana Jones wannabe got his just desserts, too, because he's partially responsible for this. If not fully responsible, because his guy there ends up getting killed. Um, 
But yeah, this is he this doesn't. Is, this is part of the movie that I saw most recently. Was kind of around this vicinity. I think right up to when the two T Rexes uh, destroyed that big van. That's still a great sequence. <laughs> Which is all obsolete by today's standards. <laughs> what was that? Uh, Eddie was saying those are some major league toys. Oh, yeah. It was major league back in the late 90s there. Yeah. Not Remember anymore. when people used to have TV satellite dishes that took up like half their yard? That, or <laughs> big screen TVs that probably took about half of a room. Yeah. And I remember those because big and thick. <laughs> they had like those sort of lenticular coverings and you and I like yeah. when we would go to Sears there in the mall we would scratch them. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost like that I think that they were projector Ask might have been, yeah. I find if it busted out right there and like <laughs> oh, yeah. and like Vince got trampled. Ah! <laughs> or just the sheer impact of that <laughs> cage door just hitting you. By the way, I found out when we uh, went to the zoo the other day, they have uh, Eurasian eagle owls. The person who was there, you know, talking about them, they were saying they're the strongest birds and that if one of them were to attack you, it would feel like getting hit by a 10-ton vehicle. Jeez. I wonder how they know. Did they experiment? (laughs) There was this guy that, like, lost just about every appendage and... (laughs) He got he got uh, by by rolling around on his body. <laughs> Think of a bowling pin that actually never completely tips over. <laughs> you know, just trying to do their, you know, trying to show this kind of uh, inland park version. You know, just seeing like some of those uh, graphs and all that stuff that. It looked like it was going to be really small. It's like you I know, yeah. More <laughs> I know. Even in '97, I was like, "Dude, that ain't going to fly." <laughs> yeah. It's like you should probably give give them much more space than that. Dietrich there like he's just kind of watching everybody but none of the dinosaurs are coming after him they left to their what booze bottle there <laughs> <laughs> You better be careful what you wish for. Because you know what he turns into later. Don't want to make him angry. Yeah, sadly that doesn't quite work with this one. (laughs) (laughs) Now if it were Ed Norton (laughs) or Mark Ruffalo. Do you have any idea what that is? It's a calf. It's a calf. We'll just leave it at that. (laughs) 
damn straight Gol- uh, Jeff Goldblum would that like it at <laughs> one bit. He'll turn into the fly and like acid spit all over you. <laughs> Or he could be like those, uh, like that, um, uh, that 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 awful criminal he played in. What was that Charles Bronson movie? Um, Death something, where uh, he'll viciously uh, rape and murder your family. <laughs> Jeez, I'm not joking. <laughs> it was a movie that was uh, produced what, like seventy eight, seventy nine. I forgot what death death something. I gotta look it up. More research. <laughs> Boy, today's episode has just been filled with a lot of research. Today's episode has been brought to you by research. <laughs> death wish. Death wish movies. <laughs> Oh, 74 was the first one. What's his daughter's name in this movie again? Is it Karen? I honestly don't remember. At first you know I what, thought it was you know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing it or am I doing it? I'm doing it. <laughs> At first I thought it was Crystal and I'm like, no, nah, I don't think it's Crystal. I thought it started with a K or a K, K sound. <laughs> uh, let's see here. By the way, listeners are probably like, well, they mentioned it earlier. If you guys would shut up about, you know, MPA ratings. (laughs) (laughs) It looks like uh, Vanessa Lee Chester. Oh, her name is Vanessa? Yeah. That's her character's name? Oh, no, no, no. This is, uh, it's her actual name. Apparently, okay. she's, uh, uh, older than you. Well, yeah, I knew when I watched this, she was older than I. But, uh, let's see here, 97. Uh, Kelly. Kelly, okay. I was Kelly. right. It was, it was a K. Kelly <laughs> Curtis. And she hasn't done any film since 2015. But it seems like she's uh, in uh, TV shows a little bit more often because her last appearance was last year. I remember this was like in the trailer, many of those trailers back in the day. It was so great. Yeah. And chills up your spine, the T-Rex roar. I still remember I sent you that uh, ad- um, uh, redone audio T-Rex cry where someone thought that maybe T-Rex is communicated in a more like a howling type of of manner. And like it just was creepy how they <laughs> re-edited the T-Rexes uh, inspecting the van with the howling. It's just like, that's actually creepier than their roar. Yeah, yeah, I remember, <laughs> yeah, I remember you sent me 
uh, that YouTube video a couple or so years ago when they did the when they took this specific scene for that. Yeah, it's just oh creepy. But it sort of reminds me uh, that whole thing with Grant in uh, Jurassic Park Three, where he had that uh, 3D printed. Oh sort yeah, of Velociraptor uh, thing that he had. Vocal chamber or something like yeah. that. <laughs> it's almost like Kong. Yeah, like the 76 con. I think in 2005, like right before Kong makes his first appearance, doesn't that sort of happen too? A little bit, but I know that you can see some of him kind of swinging from one tree or to another. And yet he doesn't pick it up. <laughs> Why would you park your van that close to a cliff? Granted, it's a movie, so you have to have some people be stupid enough just so you can set up something later, but yeah. still. <laughs> I would say be more out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> without much trees or something. That's really cool, like the scratch marks there on the face. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a bit obvious. <laughs> Maybe you should have thought of that. From, well, I think brought, that brought it over. <laughs> I think that's more for some of the people in the audience than anything else. <laughs> well, yeah, but you think it? <laughs> it's like it's just a bit obvious. Well, let me tell you, there are quite a few people out there that ain't so bright. <laughs> I would think it wouldn't I – mean, I know they patched it up, but still I would think because it was fractured, it wouldn't necessarily be ready to walk yet. Who knows? I had to let the kitty in. Yeah. Now he's acting cute. <laughs> I heard you had a baby T-Rex in here, so I wanted to show you how cute I am. <laughs> Goldblum doing Goldblum. <laughs> you, 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 you can't you can't have gold bloom in a movie without doing gold bloom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm surprised they never, uh, you know, like Outback has never been like, let's make a gold bloom and onion. <laughs> <laughs> we can make that a thing on here. Try the new gold bloom and onion. Now it's Outback. Maybe we just have to pitch it to them. No, I'm not gonna do that because then they'll then they'll be like, "Haha, up yours, our idea now." <laughs> <laughs> I would I would demand like a payment or some type of contract up front before I even. <laughs> I've got a greatest idea. Why should we pay you two million dollars if we don't know what it is? Trust me, you'll want to hear this. <laughs> It's a win-win for everybody, including your customers. Well, we do like to make them happy. So if I, I were, it's like so with that kind of glass. I don't know if it was supposed to be like a regular kind or if it was supposed to be sort of the bulletproof kind. Like if it was supposed <laughs> to be bulletproof. <laughs> I just imagine that. Like, why would we have bulletproof glass? We're gonna go see dinosaurs. Are you expecting the dinosaurs to be packing? <laughs> Every funny then raptors come, come popping out with like. <laughs> Well, yeah, but uh, when it comes to, you know, since they have, like, heavy armor type of veins. Right, yeah. Expect, yeah. At least some kind of bulletproof type of wind. wind I know. But if it was supposed to be bulletproof, it wouldn't have fractured so easily like this. I, You know what? To be perfectly honest, um, I, I bet it was supposed to be real glass. Just, you know, plain old glass. But if it was real glass, it <laughs> probably would have shattered right away once she, like, made contact to that glass when she fell. Well, we're, we're, we're talking about a movie where dinosaurs actually exist, so... <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a, a, a suspension of disbelief up to a point. <laughs> then that'd be funny. Goldblum's like, sorry, sweetheart, and then he just drops her. Yeah. Mm, screw me. Was it the high high or the high hive? High hide. Oh. <laughs> oh man, they talk about cheeseburger. I want a cheeseburger now. Yeah. Yeah, the cheeseburger does sound good right now, but <laughs> I'm gonna be doing something else later today for dinner instead. Yeah, I think we're having some sort of pasta dish. <laughs> what a quinky day! I'm gonna be doing uh. Plan on doing some spaghetti. Spaghetti and dirt balls. Well, not not quite dirt balls, but uh, <laughs> balls of dead cow. <laughs> <laughs> some uh, some uh, uh, grounded dirt. <laughs> you got a little pica going on. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-mm, pica. <laughs> <laughs> like, it shows you eating, like, a handful of dirt, and you're like, mm-mm, pica. And, like, your teeth are all, like, muddied. And <laughs> 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 
You're just looking for attention. You're just rolling around, showing that belly. Not, not Jason, my cat. <laughs> Let's make this perfectly clear. <laughs> Are you certain? Yeah. That'd be funny if they fell to their doom and then all of a sudden you hear Whitney Houston's and I will always love you followed by the credits. That'd be funny when he tripped, like the hook, like got him in the thigh or something. And he looks down, and now you got to spend like the next two minutes of a scene with him trying to pull that out of his thigh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then as that happens, the the van falls over the cliff, and he's like, "Well, crap," <laughs> because it got caught in his thigh. Everybody perished. <laughs> I mean, they should have perished when that whole entire rope that was tied around the tree were there. Well, uh, again, on. you would think that they would have fallen for it. Again, if if that's your complaint in a movie about dinosaurs existing in the real world, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I tell some people in the, in uh, some of these kaiju groups they complain about certain things not being realistic, and I go, "That's your biggest complaint in a movie about a giant four hundred foot lizard that breathes fire." <laughs> oh yeah, but I'm talking about as far as some of the more realistic sort of situation. Oh, I know. I mean, I get, I get it, but I know it's a movie though. That's what movies are all about. I'd rather have these kinds of movies than, you know, some of those movies that actually like try to be so realistic to the point to where it's depressing. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, this is too close to reality. I like to watch movies to help me escape from reality. Yeah. Are you guys going to get up or are you going to just keep on slipping? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny if Eddie like starts like, how come you guys aren't trying? Am I the only one putting in any effort? I hate to admit it because I think this is an HD presentation of the movie. <sighs> like, it makes some of the effects look off. And I think, and I think I've talked about this before on this podcast, where I think, especially with your movies that were made pre HD days. Don't put them in HD unless you as a studio are willing to put in the effort to um, to treat the, the effects with a, with a more um, updated – crap, I just forgot the, the word um, – aesthetic. Because when you just leave it as is, it really is distracting in some, some scenes. Just 
<laughs> Couple dozen Marlboro men. <laughs> Try not to pick a fight with Abomination. Unless you're Ed Norton. Ah, oh, the Vegas Skittles that I dropped. <laughs> well, don't you think you could maybe walk around that? Sure, it may take you another half a day to a day, but isn't that worth it? <laughs> <laughs> two meters tall not the official paleontological description because they were quite a bit smaller <laughs> they were probably what near thigh height <laughs> and that is true Captain Dirtbag. <laughs> For some reason with this thing, I'm getting Goonies vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is good enough. Ay, 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 Puzzle weight, puzzle weight. Oh, no way, he died in twenty eleven. Really? Yeah. Hmm. He was sixty four. He died of pancreatic cancer. Hmm. He had testicular cancer in 90. Oh, that's right. He was an Alien 3. I'm just trying to quickly go through his filmography just to see if I remember certain movies. <laughs> it was in a movie called The Age of Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, he was in uh, Inception. Huh. I haven't seen that one in a while. Yeah, same here. I guess I don't remember him being in that. Yeah, the last time I saw Inception was uh, when it originally came out on home video. Damn, that was... 2010. years ago. 11, yeah. 12 years ago. Yep. I thought it was a decent... Uh, visually, it was... Uh, you know, a pretty neat movie. But story-wise, I'm like, huh. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I just had a hard time, like, f- you know, following along with some of the... some of the plot points. I have Interstellar. I've had it on Blu-ray for, like, four years, but I haven't watched it yet. That one's pretty good, too. We tried watching, and then uh, Don Kirk. That one's pretty good. I've, we tried I've, watching uh, Tenet about two years ago, but we couldn't hear what the characters were saying, so we gave up about twenty minutes in. We're like, yeah. nope. <laughs> yeah, I've I've yet to see that one. And then his next project is uh, Oppenheimer. That might be interesting. <laughs> That'd be funny if he accidentally missed and like shocked himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how this feels on my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you, 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 you go ahead and try it. It's like sticking your tongue on the positive end of a battery. <laughs> <laughs> Except this battery will kill you. Hi, buddy. I'd be afraid like my like foot would get caught on like a tree root and then like my leg would be pulled out of its socket or something (laughs) (laughs) I kind of like this, the Coelophice, uh, not the Coelophice, I keep wanting to call them Coelophices. Um, the compies are kind of like, all right. <laughs> I wonder if they had some of those... Uh practical effect versions of those like glued onto like specific like onto a shirt and pants as well I'm sure because I remember watching a documentary um, uh, the one at the beginning of the movie that befriends the little girl um, they did some interesting wire work with that one I'm assuming they did something similar here, too. (laughs) Kelly just sounded like my daughter. Carry me. This 
part two may also potentially be in the Redwood, but I'm not fully sure about that. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it was. Because it seems like quite a bit of some of the scenes were shot in the Redwoods area. Yeah. I'll have to check out some of the um, special features on my disc one of these days. Maybe when we uh, actually do a discussion on this. So two weeks from now, do you want to do a discussion on this? <laughs> I probably want to do something else. <laughs> I figure since we're doing the commentary on these first, it'll probably be at least maybe another year before we do the, the discussion on these. <laughs> yeah. You just want to say right now, we'll just continue the Jurassic Park retrospective moving forward here until we're done with that. Uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. I um, I haven't updated that list yet. I need to do that. I was going to do that the other day, and then I just forgot. Dooby 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 doo. Uh, where are you? Okay, here we are. So we can get rid of Jurassic Park 2. Here. Alright, I'll just leave this up because you'll probably want to see it. Maybe for later. <laughs> I don't remember that. That's crazy. What's so funny? Oh, I was just kind of looking at some other stuff here. I always find it interesting in these Jurassic Park movies that, you know, you have other dinosaurs that are just as large, if not larger, than T Rex in terms of weight. And the only times in which you really see the water like shake is when you know the T-Rex is going to approach. It's like that's the T-Rex calling card. Yeah. <laughs> Just like uh, calling cards for uh, Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees. <laughs> yeah. But it's like you do realize the Stegosaurs are probably heavier than the T-Rex. So, you know, they would Even do that the, too. Uh, Rachiosaurus and Brontosaurus. <laughs> but nope they'll do thundering but they won't vibrate the water <laughs> that's creepy even just poking the head into the tent <laughs> too <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
if there is an opening on the other end of that tent, and if I were in that situation, I would be like busting out on that other end right before that T Rex even got like a quarter of its head in. <laughs> Kelly does a very good job here of like really selling the fear. The one good thing about that, though, is he ended up saving Sarah and Kelly because that got the T-Rex's attention. Yeah. Who knows what would have happened if he hadn't said anything. I mean, sure, now everybody else is screwed, but... <laughs> oh, the other one's in the back there. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I, I never noticed that. I thought it was just the one. Yeah, I never noticed that either. They really hid that T-Rex. They need to have a where's T-Rex. Yeah. <laughs> book made now <laughs> I'm surprised the second one didn't come running at them either it was kind of like chewing on something kaboom yeah and just sticking on to his feet <laughs> yeah what a way to go, dude. Like, just being smashed. <laughs> just... <laughs> That'd be funny if he accidentally swallowed that trank or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I I don't think I necessarily would have gone in a group. I would have tried, if possible, to break off from the group. Because then maybe, just maybe, the T-Rex will uh, follow the larger group. Oh, now you've gone and done it. <laughs> Maybe this is where uh, M. Night Shyamalan got uh, the idea for that Mark Wahlberg movie he made where the grass is the killer. <laughs> Whatever that one was called. Wasn't it wasn't it the fog? No, I don't think it's the fog. Let me check here. Mark Wahlberg. Or were you thinking of was it the sixth sense? No. It's not the sixth sense. Okay. Here. Time for some more research. 
Filmography. Oh, it takes me to another page. Mark Wahlberg filmography. Uh, do, 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 do. Is it The Happening? Yeah, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, it's got John Leguizamo and Zoe Deschanel, Zoe Deschanel in it. Huh. <clears throat> Maybe I'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> it received generally negative reviews. Oh, a lot of the Shyamalan movies are sort of that way. <laughs> The plants are now targeting the individuals. Oh, I may have to check this out. It sounds so bad that it's got to be entertaining. <laughs> I'm going to have to check that out. Killer grass. I don't want to hear anything bad about Day of the Triffids anymore. <laughs> <laughs> What would have been nice anyways if for Jurassic Park 3 they had um, revisited at least maybe one or two sets that are present here in the Lost World and like maybe left a calling card like maybe Malcolm drops something and Sam Neill picks it up and realizes it's Malcolm's. You know, just a few short years and stuff like a lot of the buildings and stuff had just really been uh, was it uh, overrun overrun or deprecated I think that's the word I was going for no decimated something like that yeah Like, really run down already. That's an interesting point, because um, I almost wonder... Well, that hurricane that hit... Um, you, you saw earlier in the movie uh, uh, the um, Five Deaths Islands are pretty close together. That when that hurricane hit, it had to have hit all five islands. So... I mean, when you get a hurricane that, you know, decimates. But when it comes like to, that. to something like this with all that moss and stuff just sticking on the walls and everything that you see there and then plants and growing, it's like, <laughs> it's like a hurricane can't do that. <laughs> well, yeah, and it makes you wonder, although this doesn't make sense still in the grand scheme of things, because if it happened, we probably would have heard about it in the first movie. But you almost wonder if maybe this went down a year or two before the park did, but that doesn't make sense, really. Yeah. It's like he's about to find the uh, Ark of the Covenant. (laughs) Spoiler alert, your face is going to (laughs) melt. No, that can't be. I would say more or less just get his face ripped off from a creature. (laughs) Yeah, boy. Either either way, like, what a way to go. (laughs) 
You know what movie I would like to see? And this would be like um, – I, in a technical sense, it would be a prequel, but it would be an offshoot movie as well. It would be nice if they made a movie uh, about Isla Sorna before it went under. Because I bet you could have an interesting story to tell there. Mm-hmm. I also think if be really cool to see kind of an actual adaptation of the of Crichton's actual Jurassic Park. You know, um, I've read all the Lost World, and I've read most of Jurassic Park. I, to be perfectly honest, I don't think I want to see that <laughs> because he's got like T Rex is swimming like crocodiles and stuff and who knows like maybe t-rexes might have been able to swim not like crocodiles i don't think but like the, because of the the dinosaurs being genetically altered and granted i guess if you're looking at it as them being partial dinosaurs which is what they technically are you could go with it but because the dinosaurs in these movies are portrayed a bit more as the actual creatures minus a few exceptions um, you know, I, I just to me, I'd be like, it'd be a hard watch for me because I'd be like, this is kind of stupid. <sighs> I mean, there there's some moments that were interesting in both books. Don't don't get me wrong, but some of the dinosaur stuff, I'm like, eh, yeah, I know they aren't pure dinosaurs, but still. <laughs> Plus, in the Jurassic Park, there's, like, number of pages where, like, Malcolm goes on and on about chaos theory. It's like, that's not going to translate to the big screen all that well. Mine! Mine! <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so the thing that's about to come up here with Kelly and the gymnastics, this sequence in the movie seems to get crapped on an awful lot by people. I like it. Like, to me, it's cool. And... <laughs> And again, it's one of those things where people are complaining about a movie that has dinosaurs. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, that's the hill you're going to die on <laughs> is gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> And it comes back like earlier in the movie, you know, they talk about her gymnastics practice. It's uh, Chekhov's gun. You introduce it in act one and then by act, you know, three or four or whatever, you bring it back. It comes into play. Yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
I just like how both the <laughs> raptors just <laughs> start fighting each other. Well, yeah, it's it's so crazy because the one barely like hit the other one as it fell. It's not like it came pouncing down on it. Right. You know, I just kind of surprised that, that uh, <laughs> when they were getting in the helicopter, you see a bunch of the strobe light effect in the background, but you don't actually see it when they're like when the helicopter lands and then <laughs> goes out. <laughs> no, it's not a timeout. <laughs> I'm surprised the integrity of that building, considering how dilapidated it. It was that it was still updated. That's the word I was thinking about. That it was still strong enough to uh, hold that chopper. Can you imagine if just out of nowhere Arnold Schwarzenegger's um, oh, what's the character's name from the Predator? Um, I forget his character's name. Just all of a sudden, oh, just you know came into the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have a jingle to play in the middle of our episodes. It's research with the Kaiju Network. Can't Jason do your research? <laughs> well, I need a special uh, theme for to do something like that. It seems like certain aspects of podcasting are more difficult than they should be. <laughs> well, they're n- it's not like that, but you just need kind of certain equipment to... De- well, yeah, I'm sure, though, you could find some software, though, that could do the same. Yeah, it's just that I don't even have that sort of stuff on hand as of right now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Major Alan Dutch uh, Schaefer. Yeah, I, I knew, like, I kept thinking, like, Archer, and I'm like, no, it's not Archer. And I'm like, I, he had a unique first name. But I think they just called him Dutch. Yeah. Boy, we're about three quarters of the way through the movie here. And then we're going to get the homage to the original 1925, The Lost World, coming up here. Almost looks like Patton Oswalt. <laughs> like I don't even think he'd be that kind of person to take a serious role. Mm, might surprise you. That'd be funny if all of a sudden Malcolm pulled out some kung fu fighting. <laughs> or just doing Goldblum stuff and just bore the guy. <laughs> He's like, you know what? I'm the fly. <laughs> I, I will I will say, um, and I never noticed this until someone pointed it out, where the ship that's coming up here, everybody's dead on board, but yet if the T-Rex was still in the hull, how did it kill people, like in the cab of the 
of the ship. Yeah. I got mad at people for pointing that out because I'm like, damn it, now <laughs> like, I can't enjoy that part of the movie as much. I was telling Kent uh, time out there. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that's a bigger issue than the uh, strobe light. <laughs> Huh? What? What is that? Doing that, uh... Uh... Oh, the... The what's happening stare. (laughs) Run. (laughs) The slow rise out of your chair. I would like for someone to make a compilation of how many times people slowly rise out of their seats in the Jurassic World series. I bet you could put together a nice, healthy five-minute video at least. It'd be funny if the T-Rex came out with like a party hat and a noisemaker and confetti like, it's party time. <laughs> Surprise, happy birthday to me. <laughs> Beautiful San Diego. The weather here is temperate. It's pretty close to where I came from. Where's the nearest bar? I need a drink. <laughs> I do like what's about to be said here. Yeah, that's a neat little line. Unless the T-Rex did get out and then they somehow were able to lure it in, close the door enough to keep it in there. Yeah, that kind of sort of works, but not entirely. I don't know. It just (laughs) sort of doesn't make sense (laughs) when you have the dead there. Right, yeah. That's what I'm saying is like it doesn't completely work, but I'm just going to pretend this all makes sense still. <laughs> and also, it's like, too, how, how was it able to get out of the cage with that heavy duty sort of thick bars and stuff? Well, no, my like maybe some, like maybe they were going to feed it or something, and so they have to open up the door, and they thought maybe they had it tranked. I know I'm giving the movie well, a lot of credit. I was but, talking yeah. about the, the cage that encased the T Rex there. Right, that's what I'm talking about. Like maybe they thought they had it tranked to go open that door enough so they can go f- put food down there or something. But instead, no, boo, I am not tranked, and it broke out, killed people, so they somehow were able to get it back in there enough. But yeah, still, it doesn't explain at least the guy controlling the, the uh, I wasn't. I wasn't there. talking about the, the door, per se. Oh. I was talking about the cage Oh, that it was in when it was at the island there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I think they would have uh, undone that while they put in that cargo hold.
the facilities in San Diego. We're at in San Diego on the block of J Street and Butcher. We're at on the corner of J Street and Butcher. <laughs> it just keeps going on and on. A lot of people don't like the San Diego sequence. I do. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's just sort of unique just to kind of show how it would be like with dinosaurs kind of in the kind of a norm kind of a normal residential setting. Although we're going to get more of that here in the upcoming movie. But I, I mean, I, I agree with people. It's a little problematic that you don't have like the police or like, um, you know, the military, military coming in. But again, it's it, that to me, that's it's, you know, I'm not going to worry too much about that. But I, I like it because it's not only entertaining, it is a, a unique homage to that classic Lost World. By the way, uh, 20 some odd years ago, Dr. Pepper was the official drink of Godzilla. Now, Dr. Pepper is the official drink of Jurassic World. <laughs> and yes, uh, for those of you um, tuning in because you can't see us, whether you're doing the video feed or even the podcast, I am drinking the Jurassic World Dominion Dr. Pepper, and mine has the T Rex on the can. <laughs> Dr. Pepper, the official drink of kaiju lovers. <laughs> I shouldn't have even said that until we got paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking speaking of Dr. Pepper, I just uh, shared a uh, little post on the official Facebook post page that, uh, was it, X plus... I think later this year is going to be releasing a 30 centimeter uh, 1984 Godzilla along with the Super X. <laughs> nice. It looks, pretty, it looks pretty cool looking too. I think those X pluses though are pretty pricey though, aren't they? Yeah, because from what I saw, it was around uh, 33,000 yen, which translates to maybe close to 320. <sighs> nope. Nope. And, not doing and then it. <laughs> too, it's like it's like even though it'd be nice to have one of those, but at the same time I don't know if you if it's one of those that you have to paint. Like if so, then like I'm not gonna deal with Something um you have to paint yourself. I the only item that I have in my collection that's from X plus is that defo reel. 98 Godzilla and while the mold itself is really cool the paint job is not as good as advertised by the way so I've I always been you, bitter about that you uh, wrote a review on that on the I did yes yeah. I compared the pictures so if you want a more accurate assessment go to that post that I wrote like five years ago whenever that was <laughs> we need to write more <laughs> Schwarzenegger and King Lear. Wow. Or video rental stores for that matter. <laughs> Dude, I miss video rental stores. So you get a cheap old Godzilla type reference here. Now this guy that's going to get eaten by the T-Rex, he was uh, like a I forget, he, he was involved with the making of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
I found that so funny though. Like a little bit ago, when the T Rex like bumped its head on the stoplight and bit the stoplight, it's yeah. it's like one of those where like you stub your toe on a piece of furniture, then you start beating up the piece of yep. furniture. <laughs> you stupid son of a bitch! <laughs> Even though it's not the furniture's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Is 76 gas stations still around anymore? I think so. Well, you know what time it is. <laughs> it's research, it's research on the Dark Kaiser Network with Kent and Jason. Hey, fellas, do your research. Boom, boom. Let's see here. 76 gas station. Department of Animal Control. It looks like they're still... Okay. Um, okay. Chain of gas stations located in the U.S. 76 brand is owned by Philips 66. Uh, Uni uh, <laughs> Unical, the original owner and creator of the 76 brand, merged with Chevron in 2005. Oh. So... Chevron probably decided, well, we already got our own, so we'll we'll take your reserves. But you know, because <laughs> I haven't seen one really since the nineties. <laughs> I th yeah, I think they're still around. Yeah, they're still really? around here. Yeah. Huh. Let's go to seventy six dot com. <laughs> Find a station. Tickets. It's, like, it's like you can either find a station or plan a trip <laughs> to 76 station. Are they like a West Coast thing? Because I see here on their homepage, it's like get two for one Dodger tickets. Okay, let's see. Do you have any here in Michigan? I said allow my location. Okay, well, I guess you're not going to do that. Zero results out of zero. We have a lot of stations, but not right here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, how many do you out. have? Okay, yeah. There's a lot in uh, L.A. Like, it basically covers the entire L.A. metro area. Yeah, it's got to be like There's a West like two, Coast. Deal. 200 stations found within the 25-mile radius in L.A. <laughs> That is like <laughs> that is ridiculous. That's probably where all of them are too. <laughs> That's the uh, San Fran. And then there's 83 stations within a 25 mile radius in San Fran. Yeah, it's either a, a West Coast or California thing. Let's just, I'm just curious. Just check uh, Vegas. Yeah, there's some in Vegas. So I'm assuming it could be West Coast. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get your own Ludlow. And there's some in Texas, too. So it's a west-southwest area. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go away. That's going to work. I like the fact that the baby gets it here. <laughs> Dad's like, go ahead, son. <laughs> Make daddy proud. <laughs> So, yeah, there's that cage right there you were talking about. It was on the, uh, the deck there. It's like, gee, thanks. Right there.
so who commandeers this ship? Because my understanding as a kid was that they just kind of took the ship, set it on course, and no one was on it, and they just decided, we'll let it crash land. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Because then how, how the hell are you going to get back? <laughs> if you're the person that's trying to sail the ship over to... <laughs> well, let's listen here in a moment, because I think they have a news uh, reel about it. So we'll see if they say anything about it there. So they are on there. Oh. So the Navy's doing it. Oh, yeah, battleships and stuff are... Okay. I like this thing coming up with Hammond here. But that's not going to happen, unfortunately. <laughs> and that is... The Lost World Jurassic Park. Yep. Pause that there. So, yeah. Um, a, a movie I still think is very entertaining and I think in many ways holds up as entertainment, uh, special effects wise. Yeah, there's some, especially if it's an HD, I think sadly, um, you know, some of those visual effects and I blame Universal more than anything else for not trying to, like, touch those up uh, more. But um, by and large, they still hold up fairly well uh, across the board. Um, but an entertaining movie that definitely has a few flawed areas. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a great dinosaur movie. In, in my opinion, if I were to make a list of best not favorite dinosaur movies uh it would be in the top half I, I think it's still a pretty solid dinosaur film yeah i think uh after seeing it whole now for the first time in uh many years even though i've seen parts of it just recently um i think after watching this and um the original one side by side now in a span of uh two weeks i think and then I mentioned about as far as my rating so far as uh, as far as the Jurassic Park slash world movies that have come out so far I think I'll prob probably switch both of them now and kind of have the original one kind of second uh, towards the bottom now because I think now after seeing this one I think that this one has more action to this one <laughs> compared to the first one there and and uh, being a little bit disappointed to what I uh, thought about how this how that movie went after many years of uh, not watching it it's like I don't quite remember <laughs> remember it being this way but uh, yeah this one has uh, more action to it 
uh, compared to the first one now after thinking about it. So, yeah, I think this one is uh, a bit better as far as having some of the action there. Um, I think it's sort of maybe scaled the uh, some of the stuff a tad bit, but I'd say not too much. Uh, but I th- as far as the visual effects, I think uh, I think be on the same level as the first one. Maybe upped it up just a bit. And I think over the years, I think it's uh, uh, hasn't aged uh, uh, quite as much, uh, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I think the as far as the Lost World. Uh, Jurassic Park, I think it's a lot better than I thought it'd be. Yeah, and and I mean, to me, I think the, the these first three Jurassic Park movies uh, have to be looked at a, in a very particular way, and it's too bad that they... I, I mean, in a way, it's sort of unique how it plays out, but I think uh, it would have been nice if they would have assumed there could have been a trilogy to begin with, because I think if they had done that, then they would have structured these a bit more strongly for what I'm about to say, and that is... Jurassic Park is your setup. Jurassic Park is the setup on the philosophy that's going to continue throughout this entire series, all the way to the sixth movie that's going to come out here in what about a month? Um, you know, uh, about you know life, you know, creating cloning life and and tampering with nature because these dinosaurs are not pure dinosaurs. Not only that, dinosaurs went extinct. At least the the non-mammalian <laughs> uh, or, or, or the or the more um, non-bird type of, of dinosaurs in a way um, you know went extinct and um, and and you kind of see that with the lost world world it's like okay we gave you the setup we gave you the philosophy now we're gonna give you the dino action and in Jurassic Park 3 is sort of a continuation of that it's it, it, but instead it's like we're gonna show you some different dinosaurs here um you know and 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 there's not really a whole lot of philosophy running throughout this one and and part three which is fine uh i I know some people have trouble with that but i think those people are what i would call art snobs because they 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 think everything needs to have some deep multi-level layer behind it and it's just like no like entertainment can be this for the sake of entertainment uh, and not everything has to be you know this very fancy piece of of art and for what one person may see as art another person doesn't and vice versa so um you know, I have no problem with it. I, I, you know, the Lost World definitely is the more entertaining one. I think, in many ways, um, you could have almost re-edited the at least the beginning of this movie to continue where Jurassic Park left off and be like, meanwhile, on Isla Sorna, <laughs> like you know, do something like that. Um, you know, and that would have given you more of kind of what at least myself and I think other and I I feel fairly confident in seeing people from my generation that even though we love Jurassic Park I still think many of us walked out of that movie still wishing there was more dino entertainment uh, going on in that film but uh, you know nevertheless I I think Lost World is fun it's definitely engaging it gives us more of the T-Rex which is what I wanted out of the first Jurassic Park um, you know so um yeah, I, I enjoy it. Awesome. Well, if you don't have anything else... Ready to close? Yep, I'll just uh, kind of uh, say it one more time that uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to us, uh, make sure to, uh, to hit the, uh, the, red, the red subscribe button <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube or uh, uh, watching on Twitch as well, and make sure to uh, smash that like button and uh, hit the notification <laughs> bell icon so you uh, never miss uh, any of the live streams that we'll be doing uh, down the road. And uh, we also have the audio versions of the podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, as well as uh, TuneIn. And you can find both video and audio versions of our uh, podcasting as well. Uh, watch us live uh, all on uh, daikaijunetwork.com.
All right. And so with that, thank you so much for joining us for our commentary on 1997's The Lost World. We will see you here in a couple of weeks for another Daikaiju Network podcast. All right. Take care, everyone.